In part A of number two, we can use the form of solving for the directivity using f. So that's four pi over the integration of f over the surface of a sphere. So sine theta d theta d phi for d omega. And here we're going to integrate from zero to two pi and zero to pi. F is sine squared, so altogether we're gonna get sine cubed, theta, d theta, uh, d phi. And we know that zero to two pi of d phi is two pi, and we're given that zero to pi of sine cubed theta, d theta, is that expression. So if we plug in, let's see, um, minus cosine pi plus cosine cubed pi over three minus minus cosine of zero plus cosine cubed of zero over three. And then if we simplify this, we are going to get four thirds. So then for the directivity, we're going to have four pi over two pi and four thirds, which gives us 1.5. In part B, we want to find the effective area, which is lambda squared D over four pi. And we just calculated D so we can put in 1.5 for that, and then we get 0.12 lambda squared. Now, if you look back on our notes, our lecture notes, we calculated the effective area of a half wave dipole, and so a lambda over 2 dipole we calculated was 0 0.13 lambda squared. So, this is from earlier. So if you compare these two values, you can see the effective area of a short dipole of just 0.1 lambda is uh, almost the same as the effective area of a half wave dipole. So this means that the effective area is not really correlated with the antenna's physical size. In part C, the effective radius, if this is the effective area, this is the effective radius of this equivalent circle, then the effective radius is the square root of a e over pi, and we can plug in 0 0.12 lambda squared here, and we'll get 0 0.19 lambda. In part D, we can find that the effective radius of 0.19 lambda is about twice the length of the dipole, which was just 0.1 lambda. In part E, the electric field needs to be parallel to the orientation of the dipole in order for the maximum amount of power to be received by the antenna. If we were using a loop antenna, we would be more concerned about the direction of the magnetic field. But for a dipole antenna, we care about the direction of the electric field. In part F, the power that'll be received by the antenna is going to be the effective area times S for the dipole, the amount, the S that is parallel to the orientation of the dipole. And so this is 0.12 lambda squared for AE. And for S, S was given to us in part F. So this is going to be 10 picowatts per meter squared. And since we're given a frequency of operation, we can calculate the wavelength as C over F which is going to be 0.125 meters. So plugging all this in, we can get P received is 0.12 
times 0.125 squared times 10. And the units will work out to be picowatts because the meters squared over meters squared will cancel. And this turns out to be 0 0.019 picowatts.